Sir Michael, you have had a long and eventful career in Her Majesty's diplomatic service. And my father was uh, a brigadier. In fact, he was the, the youngest brigadier in the British Army at one point in the war. Uh, he was highly decorated, had a DSO and two bars. Uh, and uh, after the war, he left the army. We went to live in Bedford, where we all three boys went to school. Uh, and um, at the end of, uh, well, when I was in the sixth form, the la modern languages sixth form, we had uh, what was then quite usual, a careers discussion with my dad. I don't think these things happen anymore. At least they don't in my family. Um, so uh, my dad called me in and said, Mike, you're good at languages. And I said, yes, dad. He said, that means you go in the diplomatic. And I said, oh, what's that? And he said, well, I don't quite know but it's what you do when you're good at languages. This is a soldier's point of view. So um, out of this ridiculous conversation, uh, the thought went into my head, diplomatic, that sounds interesting. Uh, and actually, it, it, uh, I never changed my mind, so that I was quite unusual in that when I went up to, to Oxford College, I already had an, uh, an idea what I wanted to do. Uh, which most of my friends and contemporaries did not. I was quite influential, actually, uh, in persuading several, not persuading, but uh, showing the way to several uh, members of my college also to go in the diplomatic, uh, most of whom went on to very high positions. So that was how uh, I came to be in the diplomatic. How did your appointment as ambassador come about? And why was it so significant for you and Lady Burton personally? Well, that's, um, that's easy to answer. The, uh, it came about because I was Undersecretary for the Middle East in the office, um, and very much enjoying the job. Uh, but I was coming up to the three-year point before my retirement. In those days, uh, in the Foreign Office, uh, you had to retire at 60. No bit ifs or buts. You went at 60. That was the rule. And I was 50, coming up to my 57th birthday. Uh, so the uh, head of personnel said, uh, well, you, you've got to make a move because you have to have three clear years for your final posting as a, as a head of post. And the, uh, the options are these, that um, the post of ambassador in Madrid is coming vacant for which you are not credible because you don't speak a word of Spanish. Um, but the two candidates are the ambassador in Prague and the ambassador in Cairo. And for both of those, you are credible. Uh, Cairo is an Arabist in Prague for, for obvious reasons. Um, so I was uh, the man in Prague, David Brighty, who uh, I don't know whether any of you ever met. Um, David was appointed to Madrid and we were appointed to, to Prague. Uh, and the paradox was, of course, that um, this was the one place where we were told we could not serve. Exactly. But yeah. once the wall had come down and the Vel Revolution had taken place in Czechoslovakia, it was the obvious place for us to serve, and the wheel came full circle. I'd like to return to a certain dinner and a certain question over defenestration. Oh. Yes, well, at the end of the Queen, Prince Philip's visit, uh, we had the, the honor to uh, host uh, um, a private lunch in the residence for her party and uh, my staff. And there were just uh, 30 people. Uh, and uh, a table of t eight, I think, for which I hosted with the Queen and another table of eight, which uh, Henrietta hosted uh, for um, exactly um, uh, Prince Philip. Um, and uh, at uh, Henrietta's table, they were able to look out through the window up to the Prague Castle at the windows from where the defenestrations took place in uh, 1619. Uh, and um, Somebody said, you know, those, that's where the defenestrations happened. And Prince Philip said, 
Oh no, that's the wrong word. Defenestration means to throw out a window. It doesn't mean to throw somebody out of a window. And the, the Czech Prime Minister's wife, Madame Klausova uh, Livia, said, excuse me, we know about defenestrations <laughs> in this country. We have a word for it, defenestratze. <laughs> And, we, uh, and that was that uh, General de Gaulle had just left the scene.